Hey, welcome back everybody. Guess what? It's back. Well, a lot of you actually already knew it was back. You saw it in a previous video, but I didn't explain what the correction was, what the resolution was. We'll tell you about that today. We are proudly sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you're looking to add some stability to your tractor, feeling a little tippy side to side, check out Bora. They are made in America in a lifetime warranty. And if you enjoy the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about the 4720, four series tractors in general. So I'm gonna answer those questions really quickly and then get into some food plot planning. So first, a lot of folks ask about these R14 tires. So this tread pattern here is kind of a hybrid tread pattern that has um, a bit of an R4 in it, a bit of an ag tire in it, and a little bit of a turf tire in it too. This is gonna be a radial tire. They do have certain sizes that are gonna be a bias, not a radial, but um, the larger ones for the four series tractors in particular are a radial, which are gonna run ride a little bit better, give you a little bit longer life. What I like about these tires in particular, we've had a chance to use them in a lot of different scenarios. Uh, dirt, mud, snow, roads, grass, kind of everywhere. And the R4 tires are the most common tire that you see and they just, they don't perform well in my opinion in muddy conditions, in snowy conditions. They're great on grass, but how often are tractors like this living on grass? We had these tires on our 4066R and transferred them over to the 4720 when I chose to keep that. So there's about, I think around 200 hours, maybe 180, somewhere in there on the tire so far. The rears, you can see are holding up really well. The fronts do have some more wear on them. These are gonna wear out a lot quicker. You're turning a lot. This did live at the shop for a while on our asphalt parking lot there. So turning frequently out there is gonna chew them up a little bit. Overall though, plenty of traction, plenty of life left in them. So these tires do fit onto the R4 rim. So you don't have to get new rims to fit these tires, which is really nice, saves a lot of money. If I were to do it again, I would. These are my favorite tires. And for the 1025R, Carlisle makes a VersaTurf, which is quite similar. But for me, I can't envision having a tractor like this without these tires. I'm often asked, do I regret selling the 4066R that I had? And um, I would say, yeah, I do regret selling that. I am hoping I'm through the rough patches with this tractor, which we'll talk about here in a second. No matter what, I would have sold that 4066 at some point. I just like to try different equipment, but it's one of those things that, you know, I've had so many issues with this tractor right here over the last two months or so, which has put me behind a lot on the projects out here. and. We're already into fall now and I have it back, which is great, but I missed a lot of valuable time there to get things done. I do think the 4720, the 4X20 series tractors in general are very robust and overall very reliable. You know, fingers crossed that we're not gonna have any more issues and that we're through the worst of it now, but only time will tell. As far as the operation of the 4720 versus the 4066, it's almost identical. You know, there's a couple things that are different here and there, but that's really not much of a consideration. I did want the self-leveling loader, or at least I thought I did. Out here at the property, I'd probably prefer not to have it. For a long time, the tractor was living at the shop where we were using pallet forks on a daily basis. And so with a leveling loader, that was super convenient to have. But out here, I'd almost prefer to have the non-self-leveling. Okay, so what do we have to do to fix the overheating issue? Well, I'll tell you, the technicians over there at Green Mark John Deere down in Three Rivers, they were on the money as far as what the cause was. It was a combination of things, doing a radiator flush, changing out the thermostat, and then there was a leaky seal in the water pump that had to be replaced as well. So my tractor was out of commission for weeks and weeks, and it wasn't really due to the fact that they didn't know what the problem was so much. It was because they had to wait on parts. They had to get a thermostat and then the seal for the water pump, which everything is just taking way longer than it should right now. And they also are down on technicians. They've had some, um, you know, COVID quarantines that have to go on there too. And so a combination of factors just really piled on all at the same time and delayed us getting the tractor back. Now we have done a couple of pretty decent projects out here. We just got done planting the food plots. We did some land leveling on the 1800 foot driveway, but none of those involved the rear PTO. And when the tractor overheated, it was pulling the bat wing mower, running that PTO, and it was a pretty hot summer day as well. But the dealer put it through its paces, they tested it, they made sure everything was operating like it should, so fingers crossed, we're good to go. Okay, so we're tilling some food plots. This is the first year at the new property and not going crazy, just wanted to get some stuff in the ground. Have one area here, one on the other side of this fence row. All sorts of plans for the future when time allows. So we tilled a couple of weeks ago with the MX6000. We had the Dirt Dog 84 inch or the seven foot tiller on there. Did a great job. These fields were wild and overgrown for years and years, maybe decades at this point. And on the other field in particular, 
there was so much matter and debris on top that just kind of kept snagging on the edges of the tiller, which was kind of annoying. So you see some clumps out there. If I would have had time, I could have brought through a rake and got a lot of those clumps dispersed. And I also notice now there's a ton of rock too. So maybe next year, next time I till, I can kind of get some of that rock out of there too and, and make some better conditions. So I'm on year three or four of using an undersized planter or cedar with a bigger tractor. And I find this to be very annoying. I'll tell you the deer don't care too much. So this is why I always talk about having an attachment that matches up with the width of your tractor or maybe slightly larger because I just find it incredibly annoying and, and frustrating to have something. This is four foot wide on a seven foot wide tractor. So I'm doing some major overlaps. You know, I tried just running my tracks and then going back over and splitting the difference later on. It's just a pain, but I'm working with what I have. I already had this cedar here, so it, it's, it's paid for, right? So you, sometimes you just make do with what you have and that's okay. I planted a combination of winter rye seed and then uh, some perennial clovers in here and one of the reasons I love that combination is for not only the fall which gives some really good tender growth winter rye is going to grow just fine it's late September right now and so not only is that going to provide food for the deer and the turkeys and the other critters out here in the fall but they're going to be some of the first items the first stuff that greens up next spring when turkey season comes around which is one of my favorite times of year so for those of you not familiar this is a really simple style of cedar this is a casco vera slice and I've used this to overseed my lawn and I've also done food plots with it so you have three things going on you are going to have the discs that are up front so you can angle these discs if you want to there's a pin up here you can pull them there's three different positions so I have them perfectly straight but you can offset them to be a more aggressive till if you want to and then right after that is where the hopper is located and it's going to drop the seed down there this is the rod that goes all the way through that rod is going to be turning and spinning because of that chain drive system that goes all the way down to the cultipacker so that cultipacker makes contact with the ground and as you're driving forward it's rolling and because it's tied into the chain with a gear system that chain starts to spin and rotate which makes this rod rotate and so as that rod rotates the seed has a chance to drop down and funnel down and disperse along the ground and as far as controlling the amount of seed that comes out you do have a gate with a lever on it so you can open or close that to allow more or less seed to funnel through as you're driving along and casco is also an american company they are made right in shelbyville indiana which is pretty cool but i need your help guys because i have reached out to these folks several times and not got any feedback and <laughs> no contact at all i'd love to do some business i love my casco cedar i'd highly recommend them maybe some of you guys can send them an email say hey good works they'd like to work with you reach back out to them Alrighty, guys well it's time to plant some food plots
vehicles that I was creating with the tiller were driving me nuts. I didn't have that issue yesterday when I tilled a small little finger plot over here, but there's a lot more, a lot more grass over on this area and a lot fewer rocks. It's weird. From this field, this one fence row to the other field, a big difference in, in conditions. We ran out of fuel. That's why we're done for now. I probably didn't need to go a second pass. I was just trying to get rid of those um, clumps of, of grass that were just, they weren't like sod clumps. They were they're all tilled up and chewed up, but they're just kind of grabbing the edges and driving me nuts. I tried raising it up, lowering it down, changing the top link angle, changing speed. I tried doing everything. I just couldn't quite get rid of them. Not the end of the world, but um, it was just bugging me.
Well, that's gonna wrap it for today. Common question I'm asked, I should have thought about this earlier, but did you spray? Do you spray for weeds? I typically don't. I have a couple of times in the past, but I'll tell you again, the deer don't care. I'm not planting this to harvest it. I'm just planting it to have something different in the ground, some variety out there. So you can definitely take that step if time allows. For me, this is already later than I wanted to plant. I just don't have a lot of time, but this has worked well for me in the past and I'm sure it will again. Hey, well, if you did enjoy this video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you're looking for a tractor attachment, you know where to go. Check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.